forgiveness, to pray, Heavenly Father, God. We have seen a punish of your glory through our words, our thoughts, and our actions. We pray that let your mercy speak for us in the name of Jesus. We pray that you have mercy upon us and that anything that is in us that doesn't give you glory, we pray that you will take it out and put in us. Take it out and put in us all. We glorify your name in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this for the opportunity that you have given us to come before you to study your word. I pray that you are about to study your word. We pray that you open up our understanding in the name of Jesus and that Whatever thing we'll study here today, we pray that we'll be able to put it into practice and we'll be able to share the word with others in the name of Jesus. We pray for souls, Lord, that for those that are out there that haven't, that haven't accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, I pray, King of Glory, that you will reach out to them, you will touch their soul, you will give them the joy of salvation, and that they will repent and see that you are the one true God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you also use us to touch other people's lives. I pray that we will win souls for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and adoration. Blessed be unto your holy name. For in Jesus, Jesus. Christ, in our prayer. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you richly. Um. Today is another day, another week. We are in our, um, let me see real quick. We are in our fifth week of going through the book of Revelation. We're in January, January 27, I believe to be precise. And now we are in our fifth week. And God has been good. Um, we have been steadily, steadily going through the book of Revelation, and I want to congratulate you for entering um, the, give me a second, entering day 17th of our, of our study into the book of Revelation. Intentional studies, like, I know it's been like, wow, how are we going to do it? We're not meeting like how we used to meet before. Obviously, it's going to be possible, but we have been consistent. So it sometimes doesn't matter, like, Maybe the days we meet, if it is not Monday, we're meeting Tuesday to Friday, but we have been consistently doing this. And because of our consistency, God has rewarded us. Um, so that is something I'm grateful to God for, that he has helped us. Like we have not slacked, we have not even missed a day. Like God has been good, God has been wonderful. He has set all the calendars, especially my own calendar. He has, he has helped me to be intentional in this season. And I just wanna say, God, you are wonderful. God, you are glorified. Thank you for every one of us that has been coming. God, we worship you, we give you glory. Just thank, thank you for the hearts of the people that has changed. I know, I know some people have, some of you might have, maybe there's a period of time when you, you went off and things were not great for you spiritually, but the fact that you are back here, we just thank God for your life. We just um, just appreciate God for all the things he's doing within us that with his word, like literally with his word, we are being transformed. I can see transformation happening in the lives of everybody here. So uh, one of the things that I'm very happy about is, um, it's it's the people that have completed their assignments. I just want to just make this take this moment to the, to um just thank all those who completed their assignment last week. We had said that um we had an assignment to summarize revelations from one to eleven, and um some people were able to complete this assignment of 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 um that we gave. I have seen people's answers and they're actually very beautiful. I read um, I read them today. Um, there's one more that I haven't read, but I read some of them today. And I want to thank you all that, all those people that worked on this, submitted the assignment that God bless you. Thank you for taking, taking this seriously. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for your time spent um just summarizing everything that the book of revelations has taught us this far from revelations 1 to 11 we give god the glory for all this um on day 23 that is the gonna be the time we finish reading the book of revelation i think that day happens to fall on uh thursday 
So that's will be next week, Thursday. We'll be done with the book of Revelations. We'll be done with Revelation 22. So when I say we are done with Revelations, we're done with the reading of Revelations, but we are not done with the entire um, topic of um, the end times, the day of the Lord, rapture, the second coming of Christ, and our understanding of it. When we are done reading the entire book of Revelation, we're going to have like seven more days. I think it's six, five more days. After we are done, we have five more days where we'll go over concepts. Now you guys will be professors at this point. You guys have read the book of Revelation. You guys have studied it, not just read, you've studied it. At that point, you guys will be like, um, what's the word? You guys should be knowledgeable about the book of Revelation. And that's when we'll be given a lot of group assignments. A lot of questions are going to be asked. A lot of um a lot of like group activities will happen and it's just for you to like foster your knowledge. So these assignments are just a prelude to what we are gonna be at. We're gonna have breakout rooms, yeah. We can do breakout rooms on Google Meet and you would have people who are gonna be challenged, like different groups of people randomly are gonna be challenged to talk about something, preach about something. And we're just gonna make it more interactive because by then we'll be done with the reading of the book of Revelation. So I just trust that God's grace will be sufficient when we get to that point. Because at that point, so I'll be giving another assignment similar to this one to summarize Revelations 12 to 22. So um, just um, my kudos to who it is due, uh, to those who have done this work. This is just a list of, these are the people that did the assignments. Um, Sibo, Rejoice, Monique. I wanna say thank you so much for completing the assignment. Um, I know we're many here, but like these people actually completed and sent it in. Um, so I want to say thank you for completing this assignment. I don't, we don't take it for granted. And obviously the Lord will bless you. It shows your dedication to the word and to what we are doing here. So thank you all for, thank you. Thank you to the three of them for completing and sending it. I've read, I've read their assignment work. I, I don't just put it there. I read it. Um, I commented on some of it. I commented, I believe I commented on Monique's own. I replied rejoices. I love rejoices on um, practical examples. They were so beautiful. They were so beautiful. I think that when 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 I read it, I was like, okay, like this is this is what revelation is all about. So rejoice, you did an amazing job. You did it was very short, but it was very concise. It was very concise. Um she said something that like really stood out to me. If I can find it, I will definitely read it. I have a lot of tabs open <laughs> right now, but she said something that was very, very concise to me. And I think she did an amazing job. So thank you so much, Rejoice, for a good work. Um, I am actually led to read what she said. So please just give me like, like some minutes just to read that last part of what she said. Um, all right, she said a practical example of all of how I would apply all I have learned in Revelation is by sharing the truth of the word to others, not just telling them about the suffering they would experience if they are not found righteous in the last day, but also telling them about the peace, joy, and triumph that Christians would experience in heaven, according to Revelation 7. Say so also, I would ensure that I do not backslide or give up my faith because I want to be among those that will be with Christ in heaven. I, I thought that was like super beautiful. I thought that was like really, really beautiful. So um, that's that pretty much summarizes what this is all about and why we are doing this. I just want to celebrate you all for your, um, them, especially for their commitment, creativity, and their accuracy of scripture. I read it and I, did not see any error. Maybe they might not have sufficient understanding, but the things they actually wrote down were pretty accurate. So um, Monique, thank you for your accuracy. Um, I'm still going over Sibyl's own because she, she, man, she was writing some beautiful notes. So just um, wanna say that before we get started. Okay, we're gonna go into the reading um, of the book of Revelation chapter 16. I told you today's, um, Today is day 17, we're reading Revelations chapter 16. So I would love for readers to indicate, those who want to read tonight, please indicate your 
You can raise up your hands, please. Just uh, indicate we're going to go into it. Okay, readers, readers, you know we have to be, ah, what is this? Why are we so lax in deciding who is reading today? Not do this, not do this. That's bad behavior. All right, I have three people so far. There's still a chance if you need to, if you want to read, you want to partake in this blessing. Remember Revelations 1 3. Blessed are those who read, blessed are those who hear, and blessed are those who keep the words that are written in this commandment. All right, I have three people. We have 21 verses. I think it was meant to be easy math 777. Seven, seven. That's what we're doing. Oh, seven, sevens. You, you guys know about sevens, man. Sevens is a powerful number in scripture. Sevens is a very is a is a holy number it's a very holy number i guess that's what we have today we're partaking in the in the holy triumvirate of sevens blessings okay so first will be peter one to seven then um then thinking from eight to fourteen and then from um, monique will conclude from 15 all the way to 21. uh i'm going to use nlt today you can use anything, by the way. You can read from any translation. Let's get it started. Go ahead. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured his bowl on the land, and ugly festering sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out its bowl, his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead person, and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of the water, and it became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, You are just in these judgments, O Holy One, you who are and who were, for they have shed the blood of your holy people, and your prophets and your blood to drink as they de as they deserve and i heard the altar respond yes lord god almighty true and just are your judgments amen next and then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun causing it to scorch everyone everyone with its fire everyone was burned by this blast of heat and they cursed the name of god who had control who had control over all these plagues they did not repent of their sins and turn to god and give him glory then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom was plunged into darkness his subjects ground their teeth in anguish and they cursed the god of heaven for their pains and sores but they did not repent of their evil deeds and turn to god then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates, Euphrates River, and it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their army towards the west without hindrance. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leaping from the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophets. They are demonic spirits who work miracles who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Lord on the great judgment day of God, the Almighty. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go naked and be shameful, ex shamefully exposed. And then they gather the kings together to the place that in in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then the then came then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, pearls and thunders, and severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. So tremendous it was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nation collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury mm. of his wrath. Every island fled mm. away, and the mountain 
<clears throat> and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell on people, and the curse got on account of the plagues of hail, because the plague was so terrible. Amen. The Lord bless the reading of his word, the hearing of his word, uh, the keeping of his word in the name of Jesus. May it resound in our hearts and um, may it teach us to do better to do his will and may he guide us to all truth in jesus name amen uh god bless you all for reading god bless you richly thank you for taking it upon yourself to read tonight you are definitely definitely blessed all right let's get back into this uh we're reading revelations chapter 17 and um as we've been proceeding through the scriptures we've seen three um indications of um judgment being poured uh, we see that it gets worse um, as we look at the scriptures. The first one we saw was the the um, the first one was the seals. The first one was the seals, and we see this is during the period of great tribulation. We see that during the seals, we see the four men were spoken of. We see a third of the hurt was a fourth of the hurt was given to them. We see how massive destructions happened to the world. We see all these things happening. And um, then we begin to see that worse things happen. You see um, there are martyrs. You see, you, you begin to see these martyrs spoken about that these martyrs are in they are, they are the souls under the altar of God before his throne. You, see, you hear about them. These are people that have died, tribulation saints that have died to um to this time of um evil this time of um of great evil in the world there you see earthquakes being mentioned and then after the seventh seal was open then you see the trumpets being sounded it's it's a it's a very 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 um powerful thing because during this revelations chapter six um, 16 we're going to see all the bowls and the end of the judgment of god happening right now because these seven bowls concludes the judgment of god over the inhabitants of the earth over the unrepentant over all that abide or reside in it and this will conclude what we have been reading since we started the um, revelations chapter chapter 6 from revelation chapter 6 all the way to 16 we have seen the different means of judgment that god has placed upon these people um give me a second let me plug in my computer so it doesn't die midway um, right okay so i'm going to share some things just to give us um an idea of like um where we are coming from where we are coming from. I'm also going to reflect on Revelations chapter 15 a little bit so that we can give us um, kind of like a flashback or just um, just to recap, just a recap of what we've been dealing with before, prior to this. Uh, give me a second and share my screen. Okay, my screen is being shared. All right, this is it. This is basically it. So this is the tribulations we have seen thus far. The seven seals, then we see the um we see the 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 trumpet the seven trumpets that are blown by seven angels and after the trumpets are blown we see the last one which is the seven some people call it the vows some people call it bowls in our scripture most translations say bowls because some people say it's not a vow because like if it's a vow and you see for some reason when you're pouring something out of out of a bottle when it's it's pouring out you see bubbles of like bubbles appearing inside the the bottle but like when you're pouring it from a bowl everything falls out but kind of like when you're pouring it from a bottle it takes a long time for everything to get poured out but when you're pouring it from a bowl everything gets poured out at the same time so that is kind of why people say bowls so but this one does say vows it's a very good illustration of what we're talking about from the seven vows from from the last thing that happens in the in the trumpets when the seventh trumpet sounds then you see seven bowls appear 
uh, seven angels with bowls appear from the temple of heaven. And then you see all these things happen again when you see the seven bowls poured. And this completes the judgment of the great tribulation. At this point, we have completed the great tribulation that is supposed to happen in a period of seven years. So I told you that we're still going to go back to the book of Daniel. That day is fast approaching. The day we go back to the book of Daniel and make sure that we understand why is it seven years? Like some of you might be wondering, like, where do we get the seven years for? from? Where do we get the seven years from? And I tell you, when we read the book of Daniel, chapters 11, I believe, and chapter 12, we would have a very good understanding of the seven years. So now we see all these things that have happened before. Um, I'm going to just recap some of the things we spoke about in Revelations chapter 15. In Revelations chapter 15, we spoke about um, the seven angels that appears with the seven plagues. We see them appearing and we talk about the temple of God. And I really was like, I've been thinking about it. You know, I told you last week that I would go like do like some research on this word because I have to understand and I, I know that when the new Jerusalem is brought down upon the head, that is during after the second coming of Jesus Christ, that it says there will be no more temple for God will inhabit his people. So that's what he says. So I'm not, I'm not like thinking, okay, so now why is there a temple in heaven? And I begin to realize that, yes, there is a temple in heaven. There is a temple in heaven. And we see this mentioned in um in Revelation chapter 15. We've seen this mentioned even before, sp spoken about. We have also heard that our body is a temple of God. So there, there are various ways temples are mentioned in the Bible. But this temple that they are mentioning is a temple that is in heaven. It says in Revelation chapter 15, verse 5, it says, after, I, after this, I looked, I saw in heaven the temple that is the tabernacle, tabernacle of the covenant law, and it was open. I showed you a picture of what of kind of like a temple the, before, prior. I showed you what it looked like the other day. And um, when we spoke about this, we just saw that the designs that Moses got from the temple were given to him by God. God divinely anointed all the craftsmen that built that temple. The way Moses was given that structure of the temple, it was it was it was a similitude of something that already existed. When I say similitude, I mean like it's it seemed like it was a picture of something that was in existence before and we see all these things that are that moses built the ark of the covenant all these things the the holies of holies we see all these things mentioned in um revelations chapter 15 and we see we see all these things being spoken about one of the things that i've i've realized after going over the scripture again is that what we see happening is something that used to happen before um in the book of Leviticus, when all the priests proceeded to um to anoint, like when they get all the they kill the animals, they kill the they slay the blood, they, they, they slay the animals, they take the blood and they use it for the repentance of the people. One of the things that the 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 um the priests do is that they go into the temple and upon the Ark of the Covenant, where the mercy seat exists. They pour blood upon it as an atonement for people. But what, when we see this Revelations chapter 5, we see that instead of a blood of atonement being poured upon these people, rather it's, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's bowls filled with the wrath of God that is being poured. That means at this point, there is no more atonement for them. Prior, before, prior, to, prior, prior to before, like temples were a place of atonement. Temples were a place that is mentioned that they, they, they take the blood of the lamb and when they pour the blood of the lamb upon the mercy seat, the sins of the Israelites were forgiven. But rather than a blood of atonement being poured on the seat, instead, bowls that are filled with the wrath of God is what ends up being poured upon the earth, upon the world. That's what ends up happening instead of a day of atonement. Rather, it is a blood of it's sorry, it's the bowl of God's wrath that is poured upon the world. 
And why is it the case? Because the people remained unrepentant. People remained unrepentant. People did not change their ways. People were stuck by their ways. And you might be wondering, what is wrong with these people? Should they don't get sense? How will they keep doing this thing? Is it possible that people can be so so into their own uh, desires and so foolish that they won't see that God is that they have God is fighting them and they think they would win against God. I'm telling you that people have done this before. People are doing it now. A fine example of people that no matter what God is saying, no matter how God sends out his judgment upon them, they still go back to their old ways. A wonderful example of them is the Israelites. If you read the books, the books of the minor prophets, the major prophets, you see how many times God tells them to repent, turn from your ways, my people. He said, my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. But the people refused to listen. And God sent many prophets and they killed, their, they killed many of these prophets. And they, con they continued in idolatry. They continued in evil. And they kept, you see, the Assyrians will come and destroy them. And they will cry out to God again, and they will, they will repent. But then again, they will go against God again. And it kept happening, kept happening. Kept, the Philistines will come and attack them. Like the time during the time of Saul, the Philistines came and attacked them. But they kept their evil ways. They kept staying to their evil ways. Especially when, after the, the time of Solomon, idolatry became pre, um, prevalent. And they continued their evil ways. So I'm telling you, this is what will happen again in the future. That people would would want to forget God. That you know, that that when God, but they even see God's mighty hand, they will still stick to their desires. They will still remain unrepentant. And because they are unrepentant, there is no mercy anymore for them. And we see a conclusion to that. It says in um, I'm just going back through recap of 15. It says. It says, then one of the four living creatures, I'm, I'm reading verse 7 of Revelation 15 right now. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God, who lives forevermore. Remember, these angels came out of the temple of God. They came out of the temple. And then when they came out of the temple, it says in verse 6, it says, out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues. Say they were dressed in clean, shiny linens and wore golden satchets around their chest. That means they had a priestly duty. But at this time around, they came out of the temple and they were carrying, they, were, they, they came with plagues and they were given the rats of God to fill their bowls with. It says, and when they were given that, it says the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. At the moment those people came out of the temple, at the moment they carried the wrath of God, there was no longer mercy. There was no longer atonement. Access to the temple of God and to atonement was closed. Because the glory of God himself had closed down the place. No more atonement was present. You might wonder, how is this possible? Why is it that they can't go back into the temple? Why is it that God is shutting the door? Is this a character of God? Yes. We see this in Genesis. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit and they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, the Lord placed a sword the Lord placed angels to prevent them from coming and eating the tree of life. So we see that this has happened before. Because there, there is a point that it gets to where God's judgment must see fruition and completion. And this happens in this point even more worse than whatever had we had experienced during the time of Adam and Eve. Because even during the time of Adam and Eve, mercy was speaking for us. But at this point, there is no longer any atonement available until after 
the seven plagues have are completed. And these seven plagues complete the great tribulation. So now what we see in Revelation chapter 16 is the period of this great tribulation completing the, the completion of this great tribulation. We see what happens when the first angel pulls out his um it says it so the it says in Revelation chapter 16 verses um from verses one. I'm going to start from verse one. It says, Then I heard a mighty voice from heaven say to the seven angels, Go your way and pour out on the earth the seven bowls containing God's wrath. Remember, we've spoken about this. One of my favorite scriptures remains Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one, verse 21, I believe. I'm going to see if I can open it real quick. Romans chapter one. See, God's wrath is revealed. God's wrath is revealed. It says in Revelation, sorry, Romans chapter one, verses eighteen. It says, "The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since they were since what may be known about God is made plain to them, because God has made it plain to them." For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. So that people are without excuse. People are without excuse. Even in this predicament, where people are without excuse, people, some people will still remain unrepentant. And therefore this begins, I'm going to go back to Revelation 16. 16. It says, Go and pour the wrath of God. Pour the bowls containing the wrath of God. So the first angel did as he was commanded. And poured out his bowls. And then malignant sores came forth. We saw in that, in that, um, in that picture I showed you before that it means diseases. Diseases came forth. Malignant sores broke out on everyone who had the mark of the beast. And we we'll worship this statue. His statue. So remember, we spoke about the the image of the beast was there, and everyone was told to worship it. If they did not worship it. They were they were they were they were they were brutally um, um, segregated. It was a political regime, guys. It was a political regime, and anyone that did not serve, that did not worship, that did not use the image of the beast, they were they were ostracized, they were tortured, they were put into military military camp. It's almost like during the time of Italy, oh, sorry, I'm saying Italy, the, the time of Hitler, every Jew was put inside this concentration camp because they were against them. Anyone that, any opponent, during the Holocaust, thank you, any opponent at that time against, you see, you see, it's, it's happening now, current affairs, the opposition party to the to the rush to the Russian leadership at present just died like one week ago in prison. Anyone against the political regime will be ostracized. The same thing that is happening, more for bit that is happening just a little bit, not not as bad as other places, but we see such things happening even in America where people are ostracized because of their opinions and thoughts. And to the point that some people can be so terrible as to, 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 to send in death threats to political parties, oppositions and stuff like that, or to even, to even go as far as brutally, brutally um, assaulting them physically. Things like this begins, it, it becomes a normal thing for those who don't bow down to the image of the beast. And we see now God's wrath is finally revealed. All the things were, all the other things were prelude. Now, all the people that had the mark of the beast, all the weeds, remember we spoke about the weeds, all these weeds, they received the disease. That's the first one. Second bowl is poured. And then it says, the sea became like the blood of a corpse. We've seen this mentioned before. We've seen it even in the second tribulation where the sea turned to blood. It happens. We see that again referenced in this seven bowls that the sea is turned to blood i don't know if they are referring to the same thing i believe it's different instances of this happening but we see that it is very similar there's very sim there's a there's quite a lot of similarity between the seven bowls and the the seven 
um, trumpets and the seven seals. So that is why they, they say that they, they, they seem to happen all together. That is why they are into each other. But we see that, in the, you see the seed turns to blood again. We see that being mentioned. We see that um, after that, the third angel comes and the river also became blood. He said that, it, let me see verses three again. It says, when the second angel poured out his bowl, the second one, he says, everything in the sea died. Then the third one says, when the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the spring, the rivers are the spring are where people drink water from. He said they became blood. Well, you guys are evil. You guys are, are you are quick to 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 um to pour innocent blood. Well, drink blood. And he says, and I heard the angel who had authority over all the waters. Hmm. An angel that has authority over the waters. This is powerful. There is an angel that has authority over all waters. Wow. An angel that has authority over all waters. It says you are just, O oh, Holy One. Who is and who always was, because you sent, you have sent this judgment. This angel that has authority over what waters could not help but to say, "You are just for doing this." That God is just for doing what He's doing. So since they shared the blood, you see, I was saying that before they shared innocent blood before. Now they will drink it. See, since they shared the blood of your holy people and your prophets, you have given them blood to drink. It is their just reward. And I heard a voice from the halter saying, yes, O Lord, the Almighty, your judgments are true and just. I don't know. I don't know who exactly is speaking on this altar, but it reminds me of when they say the souls of the of of the, the of those who had died due to all these tribulations. And I'm talking about I'm talking about the souls of Christians, the saints that had died because they persevered through all these tribulations that they were crying out from the altar. It reminds me of it, and I, I don't know. I just kind of this is my own speculation. I, I speculate that they were the one crying out that finally judgment has come because they, they used to cry before God, when will you avenge us for how they killed us? If you look at the book of Revelation, chapter I'm trying to see if I can find that scripture. It's just Revelation is just so beautiful. There's a lot of scriptures all over the place, all over the place. It says in Revelation chapter 6, verses 9. It says, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who have been slain. Under the altar, the souls of those who have been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. See, they called out. This is Revelation 6. I'm on verse 10 right now. It says, they called out in a loud voice. So when they speak, they sound like one. They don't say a loud voices. We are convertibles. They say a loud voice. They called out. They called out in a loud voice. They speak like one voice. How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, unto you judge the inhabitants of the hurt and avenge our blood. I don't know, maybe they had a mouthpiece that was speaking for them. But they said they called out in one voice. There was one that was speaking for them. And now you, you see it again in the scripture. In verse 7, it says, it says, and I heard a voice from the altar saying, yes, O Lord God. The Almighty, your judgments are true and just. So finally, they see God's judgment and they cannot help but to say that, Lord, you have finally done what we asked of you. The question that we asked before finally is getting an answer. The cry of your people has finally received an answer. How do I liken it to you? Because some of you might be feeling lost. Like, what is all this? Remember, when God talked about the Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, I have come to check Sodom and Gomorrah. He was talking to Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter, guys, forgive me, probably 16. He began to talk to Sodom and Gomorrah when, that's when, um, sorry, he began to talk to Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah. That's when Abraham begins to reason with God that what if there are 10 people, these people, these people. He began to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah to Abraham say, Oh, I have heard a great outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah and what they are doing to people. He said, And I've come to see it for myself. That's what the scripture begins to tell you. It is the day Abraham entertained angels. It's still the same chapter. It's still in that same chapter. You see where, where they told her that she's going to have a child, Pharaoh, and she laughed. 
and he said, why do you laugh? Still that same chapter. But we scroll down, you see that Abraham and, she, and we believe it's Jesus. Because he said that man, there was something about him. There was a glory around him. He looked like the son of man. They talked about it. And they said that, he says, he says that I've come to hear a great outcry. That means some people were crying. And now, when the judgment came upon Sodom and Gomorrah and the ills and the brimstone and everything fell upon them, I believe some people, those people that were crying out, will now be saying that, ah, finally, you have judged these people, you have avenged us. You know, one thing of God has said in the word, in the word, he said, vengeance is mine, is the avenger. And he, God is our avenger. Is is the one that fights our battle, Olubeja, Avenger. Is the one that fights our battles. He avenges us. He avenges us, and we see at that point they would have cried, "Oh God, you have finally avenged us of Sodom and Gomorrah." The same thing is happening here. There was a great outcry before, and now there is a there is a there is a there is. There is a is, there is a statement that shows us that now this outcry has been heard. It says then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on, on the sun, causing it to scorch everyone with fire. So it sounds like so some people will not understand this back then when they hear it, but now we can see we can see that say, ah, doesn't that sound like a heat flare, like a serious heat flare? It says everyone was born by the blast. That means everybody has at that point their skin will be blistering. Doesn't matter whatever skin tone you have, your skin will be red because the 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 eat the eat bond will be so much. Doesn't it seem like something that is already getting into the process of happening around the world already? So everyone was born by the blast of it, and they cursed the name of God even more. I don't know why this thing is um acting up. Say so who had control over all the plagues? He said they did not repent of their sins. And turn to God and give him glory. Hmm. So then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And the kingdom was plunged into darkness. Say so subject ground their teeth in anguish. They cursed God of heaven for their pains and their sores. But they did not repent of their evil deeds. And turn to God. You know, the, the thing that I the thing that I always I don't have an answer for, but the fact that God always said they did not repent, I just begin to wonder, is there, is there, is there um mercy for them if they repent? I begin to wonder, I, I genuinely begin to wonder because why would even it in why would they include it if if it was not available? Because I see this and I'm just wowed. I'm like, ah, why do they not repent? And I just realized that there are some people that they would remain unrepentant till they die. How do I explain this? A armed robber that enjoys, maybe the first time he started, it was maybe to make some money, but there are some armed robbers that enjoys killing. So will you think that armed robber will be um, rehabilitated if he does not make a genuine change in his heart and turn to Jesus forever? He enjoys the attitude, he enjoys evil, he glories in it. So, it is difficult to find repentance for such a person. And this statement remains the same. They did not repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. It's just, it just amazing, as amazes me. It makes me think that, God, is there still a chance for these people? Ah, that you will still give a chance to these people. You are so merciful. Like I, I, I promise you, I don't completely understand. It just makes me wonder at God. So the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River. It dried up the river that has been standing for the longest. Dried up so that the kings of the east could march their armies towards the west without hindrance. So we see that there is a river that was separating. Hmm, I don't know. A scripture is coming to mind, but I will, I'll have to study it to be able to explain this part better. Maybe next time. There is a river that separates these two people from each other preventing one army from destroying the other army and at this point that river dries up he says then the kings of the east 
matched whatever was blocking their road from real conquest was was removed and now they matched without hindrance and i saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouth of the dragon the beast and the false prophet three, three things mentioned the dragon the beast the false prophet these things were mentioned before they talked about the dragon which is the devil the beast was mentioned they mentioned even two beasts before and they talked about the false prophets the false prophet is the one that's is i think it's a new introduction even right now it's a new introduction i don't know it, it reminds me of maybe the second beast or it could might not be the second beast but it's they talk about the false prophet it could be the second beast that was mentioned the beast of the earth it could be but it could be another entity that is being mentioned entirely he says um he said they are demonic spirits who walk miracle and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battles against the lord on the that great judgment day of god the almighty so they open their mouth and spirit comes out and those spirits they are demonic generals they go and tell them oh yeah come 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 we are telling we are coming to give you message let's get let's gather together all of you you don't have any choice if you don't serve this the devil you will die come and let us go for this war so no matter whether they like it or not that war will happen he says so i will look out he said i will come and he says so this is about the great judgment of god he said look i will come as unexpectedly as a thief blessed are those who are watching who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed so you see how what begins to happen the statement armageddon the final battle before the second coming of christ see and the demonic spirit gathered all the rulers and the armies to a place with the hebrew name armageddon then the seventh angel what does armageddon mean um is a place of i i don't exactly know let me see. Let me see if I can find. If anybody knows, you can drop it in the comment. I mean, I've seen many movies with the title Armageddon. Okay. And they have in like parts Armageddon part one, part two, part three, and then final. Yeah, yeah. I used to see it too. It used to be very truly. They had like tanks and everything. It was really good. See, it's a place where the kings of the earth. It's just it's just a it's just in time and a place where the kings of earth. Uh, under demonic um, leadership will wage war on the forces of God at the end of history. It says the place where the final battle will be fought between the force of good and evil. Thank you. That is pretty much, that's pretty accurate. So then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. So these bowls that are poured, do you see that they are detecting times and seasons? They're not just causing, um, but they're also speeding, they're also come, causing things to come into effect. That when these bowls are poured, that's when some things will happen. That the times and the seasons of those that are on earth are dictated by the doings of heaven. How God controls the affairs of this world. That is what we begin to see in all these things. I want you to just realize that, oh, you might not understand, okay, why is it bowls? Why is all these things, all this imagery we are seeing? I'm telling you that one thing you can realize from this or to summarize all these things we are saying is that is how God's intent controls the affairs of heaven, God's providence and power over the affair, affairs of earth. God in God, God is heaven. God, the things that God does in heaven are what we see a result of on earth. That is that is the truth. See, this it says uh, the seven angel poured out his bowl. This is the last. Um, summary, this completes the judgment right now. The seven bowl is poured into the hair, and a mighty shout came from the throne in heaven, saying, It is ah, God. It is finished. Ah, God. Ah, God is good, people of God. I don't know. For me, that struck a chord with me when I saw that word. It is finished. Did anybody, can anybody perceive the power in that word? What does it remind you of? Go ahead, Peter. When Jesus died on the cross, 
Ozzy was about to die, he said, it is finished. And then he gave up the ghost. It is finished. The completion. I can't tell you. The completion, the statement declared 2,000 plus years ago. Nothing changed. God's stamp was never taken away. His words don't go up to him void. The Bible says, once I've, as he spoken, twice have I heard it, that all power belongs to God. He said it is finished. We are hearing it twice. It can Then the thunder crashed and rolled. The lightning flashed and the great earthquake struck. The earthquake always comes. I don't know why, but that earthquake is always consistent. They mentioned in those three, when we talked about all those um, instances of um, tribulation, it was mentioned to earthquake, 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 earthquake. So we see that there's a correlation, there's a consistency of that earthquake. Since the earthquake struck and the worst since people were placed on earth. We see this mentioned before when they talked about the series of the seven seal too. We, we mentioned, they mentioned that earthquake. So the timeline of this, um, what's it called? That's what I'm telling you, the timelines of this tribulations are very, very like, so intertwined. You see, some of them are mentioned. You see, army mentioned here. You see, army mentioned also here. I'm, I'm gonna get done. You see that they are so, they are super intertwined. They are like almost like, almost like they're happening at the same time. We see that earthquake mentioned here. We see that earthquake mentioned after the seventh seal. Even though it's saying Babylon, because Babylon was one of the biggest stipulation here. But we see that earthquake still mentioned in verses, um, in verses, um, what's it called? Verses 18, and they have mentioned this earthquake also when they talked about the seven seals. So you see that all these things are like happening. That earthquake preludes the trumpets of all these things that are happening, preludes also these things. It, it is it is it is magnificent when you begin to realize it. That same earthquake, you see, an earthquake is number six on the seventh seal. We still see that seven that earthquake that was mentioned before, mentioned again. You just begin to see that all these things. The earthquake we are here, we are seeing here is probably the same earthquake that was mentioned in in the seventh seal because they are so intertwined they are so it is just like the, the way the way john saw this the way john saw this um dreams or saw this vision it's not dreams it said vision so we stick to it vision is when you are not sleeping, but you receive a vision. That is a vision that I hope you remember that. Is that we were talking about the diverse kinds of gifts before. If you remember when we we're talking about um how to be led by the spirit of God, we talked about open vision. When you are not asleep, you're seeing things. So that is what John is talking about. So if you remember, there was a story in um in the book of Genesis. This was Joseph, and when he was talking about the dreams of pharaoh forgive me guys i know time is ready time when they're talking about the dreams of pharaoh the dreams of pharaoh appeared twice the first one he saw was the if anybody can find that scripture please drop it i would love to see if we can like just check it so people know what i'm talking about so i'm talking about the dreams that pharaoh had and joseph like interpreted so the first dream that just that um that that um what's it called that this man had was he saw seven cows he saw like 14 i think there were 14 cows or something and he saw seven of them were were ld were feet very fit very powerful very ld looking and then there were seven skinny ones and they said the seven skinny ones ate the seven big plump cows that was the first dream then there's another dream that he said i'm trying to remember i can't remember the second dream that he said but it is it it begins to make you realize that ramarako zatani that those dreams meant the same thing they meant the same thing the same thing with joseph god thank you for bringing that to my mind joseph saw the sun the moon and the stars bowing down to him then he had another dream where he saw different wheats like he said he said he saw their bands and they put their bands together they, they put their um their wheats together and all their bands were lying down before him the same dreams explaining the same, different dreams explaining the same 
reality. That is how I want you to picture this periods of seven seals, seven bowls, seven trumpets. They are a picture of the same reality, which is the day of judgment, the great tribulation. That's why you see a lot of things, a lot of similar things being mentioned in all these instances. Like somebody with a very calculative mind can probably project how they proceed from each other. I think there are even charts from for that. We can I'll probably find one and I'll bring it in tomorrow. So we can see how when the when okay, this is when the earthquake lands, oh, and this combines with the story we saw in the seven bowls. Oh. But I'm just trying to make you understand that these visions of this seven, 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 they are mentioning the same reality of the great tribulation. So you might be trying to try and try and picture the timeline of things and you might find it difficult. But when you understand that all these tribulations, they are still they, they, they speak of this reality of the of the of the judgment of God, then everything will be less confusing and you'll be able to understand it a bit better. But if you want to understand it more, even you can read, read and read and see how okay so this earthquake is similar to what was mentioned before so what timeline does this happen we see all this we see the army mentioned in this in number six uh let me see if i can use my pointer we see the army mentioned over here and we see them spoken about when the euphrates river is dried up see the similarity we see the sea of blood mentioned here we see it also mentioned here we see the rivers that is turned to blood mentioned here. we see the sun first of all one of one thing that happens to the sun is that it darkens Half of the sun is, is taken away, a third of the a third of the moon is taken away, a third of the stars is taken away. If you remember this time when we talked about this, we see this time around the sun is now flaring up. So there is a there's a lot of interconnection within this um great with these tribulations that we see. I don't want to explain that very well. So let's get back and round up this um chapter. This is the earthquake struck. The worst since people were placed on the earth it was still this. The same thing was mentioned before. So the great city of Babylon split into three sections and the cities of many nations fell into heaps of rubble. So God remembered all of Babylon's sins like he remembered the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm trying to make this very relatable to you, to the stories you knew when you were younger. See, and he made her drink the cup that was filled with the wine of his fierce wrath like he sent ales and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, and every island disappeared. All the mountains were leveled. There was a terrible hailstorm, and hailstones weighing as much as 70 pounds. Hey, God, 70 pounds, wow. That's as big as a 10-year-old child. Where four fell from the sky onto the people. Like, imagine... 70 pounds of weight falling on people. Ha ha. He said they curse. It doesn't matter if they are in a car, it will fall. It doesn't matter if they are in a in in in, in under under a roof, it will it will cave. See, there was a terrible storm, and the storm wing as much as 75 pounds fell consistently. Think about boulders falling from, from the sky like rain, like raindrops. 75 pounds. It doesn't even matter if you are in a bunker, that bunker will dent fell from the sky onto the people below they curse god because of the terrible plague of the ill storm remember it destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with with ale of fire and stones with brimstones it's happening again here so these are not this should not be out of this world to you when you have heard stories such as this happen in all the way in genesis so this is this is our revelations chapter eight at least understood a little bit and um there's quite a lot we've spoken about today and um, a lot of things we've looked at and we have finished the period of the great tribulation i'm letting you know that um the other things you're going to see in revelations chapter 17 is just the end of babylon the defeat and um how god slays the beast our God, our, and the entrance of Jesus. You're about to see the entrance of Jesus. The entrance of Jesus is very beautiful. The, the guy we have been waiting for, Im, Imoti, Imi Neutron, finally, he appears. 
and it is glorious. It is glorious. It is glorious. I believe that in Revelations chapter um chapter nineteen, chapter nineteen. Okay, dokie. Please, any comments? Any comments, please. All right, Peter's hands are up. Anybody else? All right, Peter, you can go ahead. Anybody else can speak after you do. So, like, I have a question. Yes. So, you know the people like who didn't repent to God. Yeah. Because of the um, a plague happening. Yeah. And how do you compare them to the Israelites? Wouldn't yeah. they be like worse than the Israelites because the Israelites repented, but still went back to it? But those people didn't repent in the first place. God gave the Israelites grace. Amen. Amen. I love that. I love that you said that. Thank you. It it makes it makes a correction to um to some of the things I said so that it's it's the word of God is is pure and true. So yes, um remember we saw that the people's name if you recollect the people's name that are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We have only one and um, people that we wrote in that page. If you remember those whose name are not written in the, in the Book of Life, the one we have found in Revelation chapter one. That we know for sure, for sure, for sure, hundred percent. Oh, is the people that receive the mark of the beast and worship his image. That one, their name is not in the Lamb books of life. It's like sure, like sure die. It's like very sure. So their own thing is much more terrible than the Israelite. At least the Israelite, they know God. They just fell off. They know of God. I mean, they just fell off. If they are shown the reality of the truth, they will repent. It is expected that they, as that when the Israelite finds out that Jesus truly, truly is the Messiah and they see him in glory on that day of rapture, they would repent. That's what is believed. And they will change their ways when they know for true, for real, that this is what this this covenant, this new covenant, this new covenant of his blood. Is truly the covenant God has bestowed unto them, they will repent. But if they now go and those people that have chosen the beast, the mark of the beast, and they have worshipped the statue, those are people that have are completely sold to the devil, completely and totally sold to the devil. Completely, it's it's like there is no redemption for them, like seriously. Because their names are not in the Lamb Book of Life. It's like it's not there. It's not there. So yes, you're right. They are way worse. There's still grace speaking for the Israelites. Because we see that in Romans chapter, I believe it was chapter 6, 7, or 8, where they say that they will be returned back. They will be grafted back in. We see that God's God's great plan for the Israelites, where we even see that 144,000 of them are sealed. We see all these things happening. So yeah, and I, I really want us to never forget God's mercy. That we are the mouthpiece of God's God's mercy. Um, why do I say this? You see that when even during this great, great tribulation, God sent people towards everyone on earth so that they will re repent. We have heard, we've seen the 144,000 Jews that were sealed, that they would they were sealed, they, their life was a living a, a pistol of God's mercy and God's truth, and they would spread the word of God, but still people did not repent. We see the two witnesses that cast the, that, that from their mouth came out fire, that they told people to repent, yet still people did not repent. We've seen the angels, the angel, an angel itself who came out and said, saying in loud voice, repent. We see that, we saw that in Revelation chapter, you know, chapter 15 or so, or 14. It's like saying, repent, oh, repent, oh, repent, oh, the judgment of God is coming, oh, repent, oh, repent, oh, repent, oh. Yet, I believe it's 14, yet people did not still repent. He sent his only begotten son to die for us. Yet some people still did not repent. See, this is what I'm talking about. The angel came. Angel was appearing in the sky. All he was doing was going around the world saying, fear God, give glory to him. For the time has come when he will sit as George. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth. I don't know if maybe these people are thinking that, oh, Maybe he will not come. He will not come. He's still taking. Maybe it's taking too long. He will not come. I don't know what they were thinking, but they did not repent. That's what we know. And those who worship the beast 
and took his mark. They were already gone, sold, completely sold to the devil. So that's what we see. And um, yes, they are way worse than the Israelites. There was grace was still speaking for them, but this ones, there were no grace. There was no grace. Because one of the things I've understood very much recently is this this concept of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It was a very, it's been a very like, it was one of those concepts that I never quite understood before. Now I can say I understand a little bit better. And I feel that one of the things that blasphemy about against the Holy Spirit means, the true meaning of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is we have to identify that the Holy Spirit is, is there to convict us of sin. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is. To, to, to guide us to all truth, to convict us of sin. That is that is the thing that the Holy Spirit does. But if you persistently deny, deny the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and you choose to be unrepentant, there's, there's remorse. I'm not talking about people that they commit a sin and maybe they go back into it. There is still that that's not what we're talking about. There is remorse. You don't want to continue into in this sin, but it's because of because of your flesh and you're crying out to God, you are seeking change. There's a difference. There is in your heart of hearts, you don't want to do this thing. And you are working at you're not staying in a state of perpetual sin. And I don't know if anybody's dear among us, whatever guilt the enemy is triggering in your life, telling you that oh, you're not you're not you are guilty, you're not worth it. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, just yeah for the yeah for for the devil. I'm telling you that from henceforth we pray against that. Such manipulation of the enemy will no longer affect your life in the name of Jesus. You are free from every bow, every hold of the enemy upon your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say that for myself to amen. So it's very important that we realize it. This set of people in their blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I, I believe they, they, they're several people that are unrepentant of their activities against God. They don't even want to change. And I'm telling you, such people exist. You might not understand that such people exist, but it is their hearts are hardened. See Pharaoh now. He will, he will, he will, he will, he will say, I will let you go. He will say, I will not let you go. Their hearts are hardened until they die. Their hearts are hardened. And it's possible. For people to get to that point, it is possible for man and human beings like us that have blood, the same blood we have red, to get to that point because they remain unrepentant. It is very possible. So we have to remember that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Does anybody have any contribution, questions, correction? Please feel free. Anything that I did not explain correctly, clearly? You have questions about one thing or the other? Yes, sir. So, like, when they said, like, people's hearts were, like, hardened and they follow God and stuff like that, then, like, did God make their hearts harden or they chose to? Because, like, for instance, a Pharaoh, God he, hardened he, his he, heart. Exactly. Right? Yep. So... Wouldn't they be a combination of people who God hardened their hearts to prove a point or other people who just do it on purpose because that's that's how they feel? I'll say one statement and I hope that makes everything clear. The, the rest of the answers we hear from God when we see him. But the adding of Pharaoh's art was a choice that Pharaoh made. I don't know if that makes things clear. The admin of Pharaoh's heart was a choice that Pharaoh made. It didn't just come out of nowhere. The admin of his heart was a choice he made. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a. His his heart was was out. His heart was ready. Like how would I explain this? I think that statement I just gave is probably the best way to explain. The adding of his heart was a choice that he made. It did not come out from nowhere. It was just an eventuality of a choice he already made. Yeah. So these people in question, they made that choice. They make that choice. They made the choice to get the 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 the, the, the mark of the beast. Some of them got got the mark of the beast after torture from the devil. 
numerous torture, the inability to spend, the inability to do whatever. Yeah, they got they, they still made that choice. Because the Bible still uses and says this word, either endure it to the end, we'll be saved. Either endure it to the end, we'll be saved. We'll be saved, we'll be saved, we'll be saved, we'll be saved. Um, not to end things on this sad note, but rather to end things on the on the knowledge of God's mercy and the power of his word that he that repents that turns to him will be saved that's the thing it's it, it says turn to god you see they did not repent that's verse 11 i'm reading again it says and they cursed the god of the heavens and for their pains and their sore but they did not repent of their evil deeds and turn to god in the great tribulation is not a it's not we, we should not we should not appear to think about it like our current like current generation it's a period of turmoil it is not an insignificant period of time it's a period of great turmoil and a lot of things that we enjoy at this moment they will not enjoy it because at that point the political rule of the world is firmly in the hands of the devil and the devil is will devour the devil will devour the devil will devour and we see that happening and what god is still saying even in that period of tribulation is repent turn to me he that endure to the end shall be saved see they overcame him there is a power to overcome the devil even when he has all political power. They, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's the atonement. The blood of the Lamb is for atonement. It's the blood that washes you as 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 um, as bright as snow. It's the blood that washes you from sin. You see, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by their words of their testimony. And they loved not their life unto death. It's a period of time where people will have to die. Will have to die. To prove their salvation it's, it's the truth we have to die staying in what they are staying staying in the, in testifying about god never rejecting what god has told them never compromising it's it's a hard time that's why as often as we can the word and the good news of god will should be spoken of and remember you might think that oh these people are dying and stuff we see that in the book of Revelation, when I talk to you about those altars and the souls that were crying out for the avenge, for their for the avenging of their blood, God finally hears, God, God does avenge their cries. We saw that in this Revelation chapter 16. And he says in 11, I'm reading Revelation 6, 11, say, then each of them was given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer unto the full number of their fellows, servants, their brothers and sisters were killed just as they had been. There's one scripture that um this our sister shared, and I'm going to end on that note. I'm just going to read what Rejoice wrote in this for this assignment, and it's just the understanding of the grace and the peace that we have, and you can find that in Revelation chapter seven. So a practical example of how I would apply all I have learned in Revelation is by sharing the truth of the word to others not just telling them about the suffering they would experience if they are not if they are not found righteous on the last day but also telling them about the peace joy and triumph that christians will experience in heaven according to revelations 7. see also i would ensure that i do not backslide or or give up my faith because i want to be among those who would be with christ in heaven so that is the truth. That's the word. It says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 17, verses 16 and 17. It says, Never again will they hunger, never again will they test. The sun will not beat down on them, like he's beating down on these people that we mentioned in this um, Revelation chapter 16. It says, Nor any scorching eat, but the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. It will lead them to the springs of living water. Remember that water was turned to blood. 
but now they have springs of living water and God will wipe away their every tears from their eyes. This is what the Lord has promised us. It is beautiful. It is wonderful. It is where we have to be. Is there any more questions? Any more contribution before we end? Questions, contribution, word, addition, anything, prayer points, testimonies, um, party invitation. What else? Anything, anything? I don't, I'm about to invite you guys for a party, man. It's called the, the, the lamb supper, the wedding, the wedding um, supper of the lamb. It's, it's a real invitation that is going out very soon. You see, ah, man, we're, we're almost done, guys. We're about to get into the beautiful, beautiful parts of Revelation. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be thrilled, man. Man, God is so good. God is so good. So let us, let us pray. Let us pray for souls tonight. Let us ask God, God, please including my souls i'm praying for souls let them make it to heaven let them find the glory and the beauty that is in the lord jesus touch their hearts wherever art is added right now lord heal it turn it to god turn it to god don't let them make this choice of staying in their evil desires please oh god help 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 touch their hearts oh god Please, Jesus, touch the hearts of people, of the world. Lord Jesus, please, please, God, let people turn back to you. Lord, please, never let me go away from your presence, oh God. Lord, please, help. Let people hear of this call of salvation. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and every leading, I will give you rest. Think, my yoke is light. Lord, please, let people leave that yoke of bondage, of, of doctrines that is saying that only works will get you to heaven. Let them understand that grace is what speaks. Let them understand that works are only benefited by grace in you, God. Let them take this, this, this light yoke of yours, which is to follow you and keep your words, Lord Jesus. Please, Lord Jesus, let the gospel of truth, let it go far. Let people begin, your children, let, it, let them begin to take positions in high places, showing the authority and the grace of God in such places, in, polit in politics, in, in academics, in medicine, in engineering, in all, in IT, in all these places of the world in UN in big places lord let's let people know that ah that people can can be successful and be saved let people know that you are the one that grants people mercy and success let people know that all grace comes from you god Please, please, Jesus, this is our cry. This is our heart cry. That through our lives, Jesus, you will broadcast the power and the mercy and the grace of the Lord. That heaven will be revealed unto people. Please, Jesus, help us. Take control, God. Lord, have your way, Jesus. None of our friends, none of even our enemies will suffer this great tribulation, Lord Jesus. We cry, let souls be saved, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Some of you, with this, after you read the book of Revelation, you would never stop not trying to share the, you, you cannot even hold it in. Anytime you see somebody, you want to tell them the good news. Your life will just so drastically change. I'm telling you that transformation will happen in the lives of every single person, every single person that partakes that that is partaking in this study. Your life will be so transformed in Jesus' name. That is one thing I'm sure of in the name of Jesus. Thank you all for joining. Like, really, really love you guys. Um, it's wonderful always like being here, reading the word of God dissecting it getting questions asked 
um i don't take it for granted i don't i don't take it like it's maybe me just giving to you guys i really think that when we come here the presence of the holy spirit fills up this place and he teaches us the word as he directs so just want to let you guys know um that you are really appreciated you're really loved and um god bless you for hearing the word uh, let's share the grace and fellowship uh, before we go Unmute, let's unmute, let's share the grace in fellowship. One, two, three, the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the day. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all. Well, you all have a good night. Um, Sister Shim and Sister Anita, I don't know if you can um, stay behind after or appreciate it, please. Uh, you all have a good night. Thank you so much. Love you all. All right, sir. All right, bro. You all, you all have a good night, bro. Hey, sister Anita. Sister Shim, good evening. Good evening. Once again. All right, so we're about to run up, and um, we're getting closer, closer to the end. We're in Revelation 16, and um, I don't know if there's any particular chapter you would like to treat. There, we have 17, 18, 19. Um, not 17 because it's very close, but anything, maybe. Anything between 19, 20, 21, 22. I think 19 would be on um, Thursday, 20 will be on Friday. Sorry, is it, is it, sorry, 19 will be Friday actually. 19 will be Friday, 18 will be Thursday. Do you have anyone you prefer? Wait, 19 Friday? Yes, 19 will be on uh, Friday, I believe. That's, that's when we're going to treat chapter chapter 19. And 20 is on Monday. 20 is on Monday, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Twenty is on Monday. 21, 22, 22 is on Thursday. That's only end next week, Thursday. Mm, I can do 20. That was on Monday. So next week, Monday, right? Sorry, it's not Monday. It will be Tuesday. It will be Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh. We yeah, know don't meet on Monday. I just remember. Oh, 20, 20 is on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Just a second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, I can still do Tuesday. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be down for Tuesday. Okay. Uh, right. Thank you, Ma. Um, the no sister show. I don't know if you're available. I'll see. She might be busy. She might be a little bit busy. All right. The other thing I was gonna talk about was um, I'll I'll try and get in touch with Shion and just let and see if she's um she wants to do any of them um the other one thing i was going to talk about is like we after we finish revelations on um on thursday but i'm just trying to see like starting from friday to the next friday um i'm just trying to see ways we can reinforce the knowledge we have gotten in the book of Revelation. i don't know if you if you can come up like something to think about like things we can do just like so that we can um we can reinforce the knowledge. I will still be going over maybe like after we're done with Revelations chapter 22. Uh, I probably will go over Matthew 24 and um, Daniel chapter 9. I'll go I'll go over them too so that we can have like a, a very solid understanding of the end time scripture. Uh, because Matthew 24 is a very, very powerful scripture and it's, it's it comes from the mouth of Jesus and it talks about the day the day that day of judgment that day of um on that day the day of the lord it talks about the day of the lord so i'll be going over that maybe in after we're done with revelations that's what i'm seeing because 
when we go over Revelation, it's just so voluminous that it's difficult to even go over other things. But like maybe um maybe after we're done with the book of Revelation, maybe day 24, day 25, which is Tuesday, next week, Tuesday, we can go over Magic 24 and the book of Daniels that covers the end times too. But I was I was also asking like if you can think up anything, any fun activities or any group activity, it doesn't have to be like necessarily fun fun activity, but any group activities they can do to enforce this knowledge, that will be uh that'll be much appreciated. Oh, I'm live streaming. Let me stop streaming. That'll be much appreciated. 